Oh, beautiful part, right? And you guys have seen us make incredible aerospace parts. You've seen us make steel and, and titanium and ink and oil parts, Monel parts, right? We got the Aerospace Academy. You've seen us do a lot of big things, but what you haven't seen is us actually do plastic. And sometimes plastic is actually harder than actually machining like titanium. Because now when it comes to aerospace or subsea or medical, you're dealing with material that's gonna move on you. That amount of pressure that you put on it, when you actually bring an end mill around it and you release it, it'll expand. And then when you inspect it, you'll be like, oh, the tool deflected. But it wasn't the tool. It was the pressure put onto the plastic. And then you ran the tool around and you released the pressure. The pressure was set to the bottom, so it released. So now it seems like it's deflection. Right? And a lot of machinists will actually chase that right there. When you look at this part, not only are you contouring it and facing it, but you're drilling and you're boring, you're popping in these O-ring grooves, you're tapping it, and you have a lot of intersecting holes at different angles, all right? So this is a main body. It's for a desalinization pump, a pump that actually goes onto the top yachts in the world where it sucks salt water into it and then fresh water is made from it and you can drink it and you can take a shower with it. Crazy technology, all right? So this is a part that we've actually made tens of thousands of these things right here over probably 13 years. Now this is a valve body and it basically just comes down straight on here. Now the first thing that we see is we see there's sealing surfaces because the water is traveling from this valve body into this main manifold. And then if we pop on the end body, these holes basically go right here, boom, and you see the system starts building. Now, when it comes to the sealing surfaces, everything has to be perfect. When it comes to O-rings that do the sealing, they have to be perfect. So if we have a 50 thousandths depth, somebody might just be like, oh, it's gonna be 50 thousandths. But through testing, they said, you know what? It actually needs to be like 48.5, so 0 0.0485. And then we're willing to go 5 tenths down but we're not willing to go 5 tenths up. So we're gonna go plus zero minus 5 tenths on these guys. And then the part just gets more complicated. Not so much because it has a million holes and it's like Swiss cheese, but because of the way the tolerances start stacking up. Now, all of these parts are actually made out of Delrin or acetal as uh, many of us call it. And when it came to me, they were having a 50% rejection rate. And they couldn't quite figure out why this thing was leaking, why they were having so many problems. But as soon as they brought it into our shop, we went to pretty much 99.99% quality parts that met every spec without any leaks. And it's just a difference of how we programmed it and how somebody else programmed it. It's a difference of our machinists, our process, our quality, what we're willing to bend to or not bend to. I came to a place in my shop where I was like, either we're gonna give incredible parts or we're gonna give nothing. So if it's one tenth out, we're scrapping it. And that's what we did when it comes to medical, desalinization, aerospace, all of that. I actually grabbed this tool right here. Now to anybody out there, it just looks like a carbide key cutter but there's more to it, all right? This is a custom tool that I personally designed. Now, when I was quoting this job, I was actually looking down inside of these bores and I was seeing the O-rings on the inside. And there's no tool that I could get off the shelf to actually go down and actually cut it. So I designed my own. But what's cool is when it actually comes in and it drops down and it actually cuts the O-ring, I measured off the exact distance of the cutting edge to a 45 degree chamfer that pulls off it. I looked at the numbers of the O-ring groove. I looked at the diameter of the bore. I took the difference. I subtracted it in half. Let's say it's an eighth of an inch. So 0.125. So I knew that I was gonna come in from my flute to the inside shank right here. I knew that I had to be greater than 125. So let's say it's like 135. But what happens is at 120, it actually shoots off at a 45. So when I actually come in and I go around and do a spring pass and I come out to center and I come up, 
it not only does the key cut, but it actually chamfers the edge at the exact same time, saving me money because I don't want somebody having to go in there and try to peel these tiny little burrs out. And if they don't get them out and they leave stringers, the burr itself could cause a rejection and cause the entire thing to peel. There's other things where you look at different types of material. You look at Delrin, you look at Norel. They look the same, they're black plastic. Norel chips a little bit. When you actually profile apart and then you have the hat and you flip it over, a lot of times you take a face mill and you'll actually cut across. As you come and get this little lip and it breaks off, it'll actually chip your part. So a couple things that I do is actually when you have that hat on both sides, I'll actually come down like five thousandths above the part, depending how much. And I'll actually come into it, but I'll ramp up to the highest point. So what I did was I created a slope. And then I'll immediately come from the other side and I'll come down. And as I go across, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller to nothing and it doesn't chip. It's all in our minds and how you approach it. Now this part right here, the material is clear polycarbonate and it looks just like acrylic, but acrylic actually chips. Polycarbonate is tougher. It's tougher to machine. It's tougher to actually get good surface finishes. But at the same time, if you can actually do it, it's got great visibility and it's gonna last a long time. You're not gonna have nicks all over it like you do with the acrylic piece. Now, if I said all the parts were Delrin, why did I do it out of polycarbonate? Simply to sacrifice some time so I could actually machine clear parts so that my machinist could actually look at the part and see exactly what was going on so they could comprehend the magnitude of the machining. And that's something that's very important that all leaders and all programmers need to do. You need to actually make sure that the machinists, the people on the machine making the part, they truly understand the tolerances involved. They understand the whys involved, meaning like why did you take a certain approach and you gotta make sure that you got crazy notes, all right? Now, I could go on and on about this part, but again, this part was a crazy part for our company, the whole project. We had 40 different parts that all assembled together, and it was a contract that we ran for 13 years until I had to tell them that I'm going to go in a different direction and I'm going to start focusing on education and the trade and building it up. Now, I was talking about Norell earlier. You guys ever read the book Winning by Jack Welch? Well, I actually love books. I love business books. I love reading about people who did big things and that helps inspire me. I read that book a long time ago and it was awesome because I've actually always machined parts out of Norell. And then Jack was talking about being at GE and working with the engineers and how they developed and the reasons why they developed and created and invented Norell. Cool little story, right? Now this material right here is peak. And as I said, every part has a story. So this material right here is very stable. You can keep some nice tolerances on it. It's used a lot in the medical industry. Uh, in this particular case, this piece and this piece and some other pieces we actually did on our TV show and they assembled into a kit that went to the space station to test non-embryotic stem cells in zero gravity. Wild, right? But look at the magnitude of what it's doing. So every tolerance has to be absolutely perfect. Check out this cap right here. Boom. Somebody else had tried to do this and they scrapped them and scrapped them and scrapped them. And I looked at the part and I didn't have that many. So on the show, I'm like aerospace parts with double end tape. And that's all I did. I put a piece of material in there. I skimmed it, took it down the size, cut it out, took the tape off, took the part off, boom aerospace parts made with double end tape who knew right it's all technique and it's all in here and how you make things separates yourself from other shops a fact about this part is there is a couple times over those 13 years where we put somebody on a machine and had them run this part and they instantly started scrapping parts you look at these bores you're dealing with tents on these bores and they would come into a problem and they would start slowing things down because that's our natural reaction is to slow things down. But as they slowed it down, they started cooking the material, which forced a retract 
forced it to close up and that was the problem. So when I would come to the machine or one of my other guys who had a lot of experience would come to the machine, we'd see like, oh, you actually turned it down, but we're gonna actually turn it up because we have excellent tools and we need to get in and get out quickly to hit those tolerances. We talked about Delrin, we talked about Norel, we talked about Peak, you got UHMW. People come with UHMW, a lot of you guys know, you know, and like they'll try to get like plus or minus like a few thousands and like that material based on heat can grow by 10%. But we actually hit those tolerances on a regular basis and we did special techniques to do that. And we're gonna talk about those techniques and we're gonna teach you guys. Another type of material is Vespel. Have you ever heard of Vespel? Vespel is kind of cool. It's like brownish, kind of like a root beer color. And a small little piece like this is probably like four or five, six hundred dollars. Like it's super expensive, but it's super heat resistant. And it's an incredible material that they actually use in the aerospace industry. All right, that's enough for plastic today. Stay tuned to our channel because we're gonna have some crazy projects. We're gonna give you some knowledge. We're gonna show you different techniques on precision machining efficiently in plastics. We're gonna keep showing you the Inconel, the Monel, the titanium, all the five axis stuff. Boom, stay tuned. Love you guys, love this trade. I'm out.